What's up, everybody? I'm Damon Hatfield. I'm joined by Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation podcast, Podcast Beyond. Beyond. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked. This is our year, Damon. Uh, <sighs> we'll see. Uh, everyone is excited about next-gen consoles, and an interesting question came up in the IGN office the other day, which is, what would it take for you to jump ship from PlayStation or Xbox to the other side in the next-gen? And I know it's easy to say, nothing. You're, I'm happy with my, uh, my, my controller, my console's exclusive library, and the ecosystem. Uh, uh, but it does happen. I had the PlayStation 1 and 2, and then when PlayStation 3 was announced, I was like, this is kind of expensive, and I'm not crazy about the launch lineup. I'm going to get an Xbox 360, and I loved that system. I stuck with Xbox that whole generation. But then, of course, there was the whole Xbox One sort of unveil debacle, and I ended up going, I ended up going with PlayStation 4 this gen, and I've stuck with that this whole generation. So it does happen. Um, so uh, gentlemen, as sort of representatives of each platform here at IGN, let's perform a thought experiment. Ryan, what would it take you to jump ship from Xbox to PlayStation in the next generation. Well, uh, thank you for asking, Damon. I have a, a three-point plan here that I'm going to lay out if I'm going to vote the Druckmann Barlog 2020 ticket. Is, yeah, wow. presidential yeah. election. Yeah. Yeah. If it's going to happen, so it's it's hardware, it's uh, software, and it's services for me, yeah. and okay. and the, broken down specifically this way. So on the hardware side, I know it's subjective, but the controller. Mm -hmm. The DualShock 5 would have to uh, go a lot more Xboxy <laughs> for me to for me to want to jump ship to again to PlayStation as as my primary platform. Yeah. I love the Xbox controller. I personally think it's the best controller that's ever been made on a, a on a mainstream console period. Uh, the 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 feel of the triggers, the the the, the button layout, particularly the offset thumbsticks, just the ergonomics of it. I, I think Xbox has, has been leading in that category for some time. I don't hate the DualShock as it's been, but I just think the, the Xbox gamepad is demonstrably better. I'm a big first-person shooter player, so I really prefer those offset thumbsticks, which, which Halo 1 trained me on. Uh, so that's, that's number one. On the software side, piggybacking off what I just said, first-person shooters, uh, for all the great... It, absolutely fantastic first party games that Sony's been putting out for the last number of years. There really aren't any killer first party first person shooters. Mm. Even Killzone back yeah. in the day yeah. resi and Terrible. Resistance were yeah. were they were nowhere near Halo caliber. You know, they were just they were not in the God of War kind of Last of Us mm. category. So, uh, I, I I'm a big first person shooter fan. Always have been going back to my PC days, the original Doom, that's how old I am. So I would want to see uh, a big step up in the first person shooter department okay. from Sony. And then service wise, if I'm going to jump ship in this thought exercise and I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to leave Xbox behind. Well, I've got a lot of friends mm -hmm. in the Xbox ecosystem, so I would Lucky need you. Sony. Yes, I would need Sony to uh, they, they're starting to get there, but I would really need them to fully embrace cross play in the way that Microsoft definitively has so that I in those third person third person the third party games I could still play with with uh, a lot of my sure. Xbox friends so those are the three things it would take for me to uh, to, to say goodbye Microsoft that's and hello Sony that's interesting I thought you might say uh, you would need an equivalent to uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Something I mean that's like that. that's a, a, backwards compatibility a big part of all the way back to PlayStation 1 yeah, I mean, I think I think we're already getting that. Mm. That's the thing. I, I feel like that Microsoft is dragging Sony, kicking and screaming into that, whether they like it or not. Um, so I'm not actually worried about that. It's okay. the the other three things gotcha. I'm actually like. I think Sony is lacking in and need would need to address in order to to win my love. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Hey there, dude. What would it take you to jump ship from PlayStation and to host? Podcast unlocked. <laughs> oh, that comes with the job. Great. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, well, first, to rebuke all of Ryan's points. Uh, <laughs> no, I think for me, it, definitely a software thing is a, a big point that I want to get to. But the first one is actually a, like, usability and UI sort of factor. Um, over the last generation, I, I bought an Xbox One and a PS4 roughly when they both launched. Mm -hmm. And the Xbox One UI for me was almost incomprehensible. It was very janky for lack of a better term and I felt like I would get lost in the UI when I was just trying to go play a game and it wasn't something I loved using like getting into the game felt cumbersome and I know they've improved it over time it's, it's come a long it's way it's come since a long then. way and I, I've obviously checked in over the years with it but it's still not something 
that I love to a certain extent because the simplicity of the PS4 UI is just there. It adapted the cross media bar of the PS3 and the Vita that they made a big deal about. And it's simple and it's easy to navigate. It runs pretty slowly, but it works and I know where everything is at all times and I know how to get back and forth with it. I would like the Xbox UI, whatever it is, to be a bit more easy to use and free flowing in the way that the PS4 UI is. Um, Outside of that though, it's sort of a twofold thing for me. One, it would need to be PlayStation's first party output would need to fall <laughs> off from its where it is right Interesting. now. Interesting. So PlayStation would have to mess up basically. But, yeah, I, I think a big thing for me, you know, this generation and even the PS3, they set up a lot of important franchises that they're continuing into the future. Like they haven't announced these things, but it's almost a sure bet that we're gonna get a new Spider-Man, a new God of War, and a new Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. If those all those sequels are all terrible, which I'm not expecting them to be, based on the pedigree, but if they were, that would be a big cause for concern of, hey, what's going on with PlayStation right now? Because the first party output is such a hallmark of why I play PlayStation. Um, so if those things were, were to fall off a bit, if they were to maybe be one every two years, that would be a reason to maybe want to jump ship. And then the flip side of that would also for me be Xbox's cachet on the first party side would rise. Uh, I owned an original Xbox and a 360, and Halo and Halo 2 are some of the games I've played the most in my life, but I fell off once Halo 4 and Halo 5 came around. Uh, I haven't been the biggest Gears fan, so that isn't a franchise I have much allegiance to, but if Halo can kind of bounce back, if whatever the new acquisitions like Ninja Theory and Obsidian and even Rare from a uh, earlier acquisition, if they can kind of come back into the spotlight and keep turning out uh, experiences that both on a single player and a multiplayer level appeal to me, mm. that would cause me to really want to jump ship. What if the Xbox controller moved the analog stick down? Then <laughs> automatically I would jump ship, <laughs> then I would go right then there. Then you'd go right yeah, there. It doesn't, no. Uh, I think the controllers, uh, no matter how much we have a preference for either, I think they're gonna stay the way they're gonna stay. Uh, those seem to be the things that are the least changing about this next generation. Yeah, yeah I agree. But um, I don't think that indicates necessarily we won't, to your point, Ryan. I do think Sony is aware that they lack first-person shooters. I do think that is the thing. They, they know they have gaps in their library, and I think they are looking to fill that. Whether that is in the first year or two or three years down the line, I don't know. But. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, everyone watching at home can follow all of the Next Gen news by listening to Podcast Beyond for PS5 news and Podcast Unlocked for Xbox news. And if you like all consoles, you can also listen to <laughs> Game Scoop. On the shirt. Uh, but we want to know the same question to you. What would uh, convince you to jump ship from your platform of choice, PlayStation or Xbox, to the other side in Next Gen? Let us know in the comments. And for more on everything Next Gen gaming, stay tuned to IGN.